up everybody episode 22 uh i'm gonna tell you how i think about art just turn in form on the little he ended up being two inches tall which is being difficult but it's uh hence the glasses I have to like really get in there um, but so I was having a conversation on the phone last night and I was thinking about why I'm making weirdly decorative paintings and why some people don't like that and why some people like what they like, you know, like soft portraits and romantic still lifes. And all that's really good. I'm not saying it's not, but um, so I have these four aspects of a painting that I think everybody, this applies to painters and non-painters alike. When we go out into the world and we experience art, there are four qualities uh, that any successful painting will possess at least some amount of. So that's color, design, content, and skill. And so if you take a Bouguereau, we all love Bouguereau, right? That dude maxed out his skill category. It's like building a Dungeons and Dragons character. You have like a set amount of character points and you have to go in and say, well, I'm going to max out strength so that I don't so that I can kill all the monsters, or I'm going to max out intelligence so I can be a good wizard. Definitely making it Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, I'm painting dinosaurs, so whatever. Um, <laughs> so, uh, again, color, design, content, skill. Bouguereau maximizes skill. And then, I don't know, I guess design, you know, in terms of like going down from skill. Skill, design, color content? Mm, I don't know. I can't put my head around what 19th century people wanted in art, why they wanted like peasant girls with nice feet. But um, if you take somebody like my two friends who I won't name, they definitely prioritize content and then design skill color. So somebody like Ribera fits that definition, where it's content-driven and skill-driven, and then the color, or content and design-driven, and then the skill and color can kind of fall down. So personally, my, um, my favorite art to look at is mannerism, like Pontormo, Bronzino, Parmigianino. Those dudes are my boys. And they have the same hierarchy as I have. Now, I'm not saying I look anything like a Pontormo in my paintings, but um, they, if you think about like the Visitation or uh, any of the like more colorful Pontormo multi-figure pieces, they're highly design color oriented. It goes, with him, it goes design, color, skill, content, I'd say. And that's what I'm trying to uh, emulate in my work, is like a priority on design and color. And those two are kind of tied in my, like, in how I want to prioritize my work. And then skill and content, especially with still life, I'm sorry, but who wants to look at a picture of anything that was never alive on their wall? I don't understand. So it's, I kind of like the acknowledgement acknowledgement of the pointlessness of still life. So in kind of arbitrarily picking my objects because of their design or color, I can kind of step over having to make what I call a thematic still life, which would be like the ingredients for soup on a cutting board. Yeah, that'll decorate your kitchen really nicely and art is decorative, but instead of making decorative art that prioritizes content, I want to make decorative art that prioritizes design. Because I think good design 
is more important than good content. So anyway, that's my personal priority. I would ask you to maybe even for funsies leave in the comments your hierarchy of the four. So it's color, design, content, skill. When you look at a painting, does it always have the same hierarchy if you're really attracted to it? And when you make a painting, what are you prioritizing? I'm really interested to know because I have a lot of uh, painter friends that I really respect who have completely opposite um, hierarchy from me. And I hope everybody really likes this idea because I think it's a really compact and approachable way to think about painting and, and what we respond to when we look at painting. And that is by far the most philosophical episode of Ananda Studio Life you're ever going to get. So enjoy. <laughs>